This jam of Shlomo's guitar today. It's Rashima's from last night. Ashba from the last night share in Hebrew. Oh, it was a partial he- Hebrew share. You went? Yeah. No, I had to go to Bnei Akiva. It was a CM of Shona. I don't know why it's finished already, but it's a six month program, it seems. So we had a CM of Shona. It was very nice because they have to see these young guys and the, the program people. They've grown up. Look, here's the Debre Torah from last night. Darko Shah Manhig Emes. Ish Kodesh, wow. Yeah, he's learning in the Ish Kodesh. The fire, holy fire from. PSS now. An Ish Kodesh from Rav Moshe. Ah, hey, Gavad. Well, Hashem, Pashas Kisisa, a lot of lots going on, a lot of Tshuva, a lot of Voda. And we're learning about the Sadiq Emes. We're learning about B'nai Aliyah today, actually, more specifically. Yeah. B'nai Aliyah, B'nai Dash Aliyah.com. We're B'nai Elias, right? <laughs> Halavai, we're heading into Beninim, hopefully, in that derech. Let's be realistic. But um, okay. it's good to know. Fine, like, to that's one of the important short. things that when you learn Chasidus, that you, you always have to be a Chochemor to know your place, as the Pirkei Abba says. That was like a thing. Rib- rib- oh, you're a Chacham. Oh, a Chacham. Yeah. You're a chacham. No, but we have to be a real You're chacham. A chacham here, so, everyone. What's a chacham? I mean, he learns from everyone, but there's also the idea of knowing your place. So you have a level, you know, so you have your drives, you have where your wife knows you're holding instead yeah. of imagining you're some angel. I remember like I used to, when I first married, I've got so many stories. I actually wrote a book about it. It's called Happy Husband and Wifey or something silly. And I didn't even put it online. There's just lots of stories of my bat chauvinist, like when we first, you know, the years of marriage with little kids and all like the crazy stuff I used to do. Like, and one of them was like, if 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 she didn't allow me to go do something like Ruchnias, they would be trying to tell me I'm goy. <laughs> that was like a lie in the house. And she'd make fun of it. You know, I'm <laughs> turning into a goy am I now? You know, obviously that was nonsense. By the time you got married, were you already full-fledged? Oh, of course, yeah. You were like observant, or are you still in the... No, completely. Or you were past the Balchuva stage? No, 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 freaky Balchuva. It was a miracle my wife married me. Yeah. She would probably was still th- imagining I was still like this gorgeous 18-year-old. 18-year-old with a big neshama, but I was like not that anymore. I wasn't either. <laughs> Just crazy. <laughs> no, I'm sure I had a good, a good animal. So I shouldn't have married me. You were, you were learning in, learning in a, in a kolo in Arzeh Habira when we first got married. I lived in Arzeh Habira. Yeah, I lived there as well. Oh I yeah. Lived there twice. I, I lived in Machal for the beginning of marriage, and then I lived in uh, Gamu for another five six years. The, just before I moved back to Frat. I know I call it back because I never lived there before. But for oh. some reason it keeps coming out that way. Maybe I must have been here in a previous Gilgal, you know, like with David yeah. Melech when he used to walk these fields or whatever. Yeah. Or maybe when they were walking to to bury uh, uh, Rachel. Yeah, maybe. Derek yeah, it could be. You never know with the Gilgal Nisham is where you've been. So sometimes it's interesting how people like feel like they've been somewhere. There's a very intense, uh, what's the word when you have that overwhelming uh-huh. feeling? Not nostalgia. Uh, it's deep deja, deja vu. Deja vu, yeah, like this overwhelming feeling. I've done this before. Yeah, well, you know, I have a feeling that a bunch of my kids are Gilgan Shamans. It comes out every so on, like in an obvious sense, certain attributes, especially my oldest daughter. Well, we're all Gilgans. Yeah, but it's it's hard to see, like, glimpse into it. Sometimes it's just so obvious that they're just from older souls. I think my wife as well, she's also very old and Shama. Very, very strong and deep, like doesn't fit the generation, like the general right. flow of things. <clears throat> I don't know. I feel like I'm from some, some somewhere not, not dimension, here. Maybe. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard to be such a have such a feeling. I mean, it's it's a blessing because who wants to be part of this world? Yeah, you know the way it is. It says Muruba Ra. Most of it's bad, so it's it's good to feel not totally connected to it. But um, right. the only problem is, like, you have to function, yeah? Um, right. And it's, that's the challenge. Um, Another reason for the designation of B'nai Aliyah, B'nai Shagam of Adoshtam B'chines V'asay Tov. Says the Tanya in Perak 10, 
and uh, chapter Siri, I like to mix it up. Because because of their avoda, even their divine service and the doing of good, so this is the most important part. They, they forget about all these like uh, different levels. I remember one Sadiq once said to me, we are all Sadiq, I don't know if he was a Sadiq, but a Khashra person, I'm sure him, he used to tell me, when we used to learn the Kutumaran years and years ago, to about in the 90s, he said to me that you need to get rid of this whole Madrega concept, like levels. At the end of the day, it's, it's about serving a chef. It's about Avodah Hashem, and that equalizes everyone, you know? Right. Like, there's this concept, you know, right now going around the world, like half the million and a half dollars, Ben Shapiro's clarifying it very well. There's an idea of um, equality, and then there's the idea of um, having a merit, yeah? Right, right now, the world's lost the plot on these concepts. Yeah, they want equality of outcomes, which makes no sense, yeah? It has to be based on merit, yeah? Right. But in the, in the ultimate sense, in terms of Panemius and Yiddishkeit, there's an equality that we're all here to serve Hashem. Now, the Bnei Aliyah are ones who have such a high level of, and once again, I keep using that word level. He doesn't actually, he, the translation uses it, but he actually doesn't use Madrega. He used Sorek Gavur Ma'ala Ma'ala Ad Rom Kolomala. So if you translate it, literally, like in a different way, that you'd say he needs to go higher and higher until the highest call of, High, highest of the highest, yeah, yeah, the loftiest heights. So it's like it's almost like a Kalibach nigan, yeah, higher and higher and higher. And Bukach, yeah, it's a powerful song, a powerful, yeah. a powerful avoda of Anna Bukach. Anna Bukach really is a shameless a Kaddish, it's men based shameless a Kaddish, right? It's a men based osseous, it's, it's a whole deep feeler of, of shameless, of using different names of Hashem to get higher and higher. To go through the spheres of how, uh, how amazing was that Torah we learned on uh, Monday? Shlomo. The Torah mistakes. Oh yeah, Rav Shlomo's Torah was important, and it was that a good, was... it was a good akdama to to what we're going to learn vital, which is Torah of Mashiach, which yeah. I think that's what Tanya is, and that's why the Moshe Wolfson, for example, Shlita, he pushed the generation bef- as his last like thing I heard from him. The far- last push for the generation. Was that everyone should be learning Sefer Tanya? That was, that was his more than Chovas Avovas, more than any other Musa Sefer, Musil Yisharim, more than any other Chassidish Shvarim, the Tiv Shalom, Unfortunately, it was like that was like yeah. for some reason it's like every every Rebbe and like a lift of yeshiva felt like. The answer to like every teenage boy's problem is like learn to see like the Well, if you learn to properly, maybe because if you hit an eleventh grader, like Ravelovsky, you ever listen to Ravelovsky share him see like the Shem? Rabbi Ravelovsky. So he was influenced a lot by Moshe Shapiro. So he had yeah. he had a panemius rabbi. I mean, he makes a joke about himself that you know he was just like the bad Khan over there, yeah, like compared to this other time. David Olavsky. Yeah, David Olavsky. But he he's someone who I you know first first year I ever heard of from him. So when I, I between him and Rabbi, Rabbi Tatz, yeah, he's very, he's very funny. But the, the, if you get to his more penimus in the Shirim, um, and one of them was a whole series of Mr. Light Sharm, which I actually right. heard some of it in person, that the, the Nakuda of Mr. Sharm learned properly is helpful for teenagers. Sure. Just the problem is they, 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 they have Krum Hashkafas anyway, some of these Magan Shirim you're referring to from your youth, yeah. and they didn't, Straighten them out through like a big rub, like with Moshe Shapiro or anybody, right. and also, so they. The Sharm is a very, very. very it's it's Kabbalah, it's Panemius. The Ram Khal was like the highest of the high. Like two seventeen-year-olds in a The Ram Khal was one of these Nishamas Mustama. He was on the completely highest of the high. He he had no yeshus. There's so many stories about him that he gave up everything for the sake of Avodas Hashem. Everything. I also disagree. He gave up his svarim. He he was macheni now. He makayim that. They wanted He's to so burn Yisharm all his books. Way too deep for a teenager. Like oh, that's, unless they're that's, already holding that could be, yeah. Like, I remember learning it. It was, like, so dry because it was being learned from, like, a lit fisher point of view. I was like, yeah. this sucks. Well, Imagine, the, like, learning a tiny, learning, the, like... A real lit vac. Well, if, the beginning if, could be if, depressing. If you meet a real lit vac who is a real Talmud of the Vilna Gaon, instead of Morgenstern, the way he understands the Vilna Gaon, which is Derek Kabbalah, yeah? Because the Vilna Gaon was a Kabbalist. If you right. would understand and right, how true. much the Vilna Gaon marched the Masih like Yisharim, he said he would walk and... In, by, but from Vilna to wherever the Ramchal was, in Lozotto or wherever, in right. Amsterdam. He would walk all the way there, 
but on bare feet just to go learn from him. Like that's how much right. he understood the Misa Yishayim had opened up worlds of Torah. And that yeah. doesn't just mean the Sefer Misa Yishayim. There's other Sefarim as well that Ramchal put out. Derek Hashem, we know, is a right. bit more of the easy universal with Sefer for us. But there's other Sefarim. There's Das Tefuna and, and Knowing Heart. And yeah. this beautiful song. I had a Chavusa once with a big, like after big Mashiach rabbi. After comes, we're going to have to do a major ticking and all these there are. for the Ramchal Svar. No, there definitely needs to be a ticking because there was the biggest Nagdus at his time. But thank God there no, was big Gedolim understood his Chavusa. I think that... And there needs to be a fix of the wrong way of learning it. Sure. Right, meaning a ticking and that like, when for I, some reason... I learned it many times. And one of them was with Rav Desla. Elio Desla's parish was yeah. awesome. I learned that when I first married, actually, you, know, you asked me when I first learned, and when I was married, in Arze Bira, one of the first farm we learned was the Messiah Sharm with the parish of Rav Desla. Where did you learn it? The Kamarna Shul? Uh, it was Arze Bira Shul, the, like the old Arze. Oh, okay. It was in a kolom there. It used to be Rav Shachavitsky's kolom and became a different right. kolom. But anyway, so I was I learning... I live on top of the Makola. Oh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's next door, Mamish. So then... Um, I dabbed in the Kamarna Rebbe Shul. Oh, nice, nice, yeah. Yeah. yeah I never really connected there. And I don't even know if I've in there once. I've done in a Rav Yaakov Hillel show a lot. He's right next door. He lived there also, right? Yeah, he's a big Makubu. I used to speak to him a little bit. He's close to my family. I met him once on Purim. My wife's, fa- uh, wife's step family. I didn't meet him on Purim. I barged into his house on Purim one time. I was mad. Yeah. When you say on Purim, I used to get so shicker. Yeah. And then I would run. I probably saw you around there somehow or another. I, I was what? always in that area for some reason. But anyway, I, um, my way I lived there for years. They're building a beautiful shul for Rav Yaakov Hillel, like a bu- whole building. It's a brand, it was a dumpy building that was broken and smashed. They've like redone the whole thing. Wow. So it's it's going to lift up the whole area because it was a real eye- eyesore there. Now it's like the eyesore has gone. It's turning into this huge, beautiful building of a shul and everything. Anyway, just to get to the Nakuda yeah. of these high Nishamas, so he's a big Nishama, also Rav Yaakov Hillel. He's a Makubu, from, originally from India, would you believe it? Um, but um, the point is that... He was born in India? I think so. Um, but uh, I mean he's got Doris already of Tamar coming out from him now but the point is that they have these high huge neshamas like whatever that means but the, 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 it's not about the, the size of the person once again we get out of the levels that's what I'm trying to right. remove it's about that they're totally for Hashem yeah. and it's the highest of high kind of a voter it's very yeah. refined Lo kidei le dav the divine service is not just to be davik to Hashem, le ravus samon nafsham hasam al Hashem. Um, they themselves to God by serving through Torah mitzvahs is to quench the first of the soul, which first for Hashem. Now this is a lot of balat tshuva action, like to give praise to balat tshuva. They they come through the door of, often because they're just <laughs> incredibly thirsty for Hashem, for yeah. anything ruchnius and true, because they've just been around, they've submersed in the secular sheker world, and the world's got worse. So can imagine the thirst of the new ballot of now they come out of wokeism or whatever they some woke college or whatever and they must be like like half dead for just any any sign of ms you know like chabad shliach in their campus is like the, the like moshe rabbeinu for them you know like or any right. any rabbi any kid rabbi anybody out there because it's such sheker what they're exposed to like at least when i you know when i was a kid there was still some like values amongst the nations and the general saw of a university there was still some sort of you know place for discussion now it's like you have an opinion about israel you're like you're a russia yeah Yeah. and you know whatever so like it's it's so broken the world that a soul must come out with such an intense thirst but remember that 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 whole thing like so with daniel katz i'm just bringing him up just to ellis he talks a lot and people are into it the idea of the vakers and the vakers hear him again and again so, you know, elevation, I, I respect it, but there's a level beyond that. And that's the Rosh, Rosh, Rosh Shmuel Diamond, I don't know to call him rabbi, but he, he has become a shtickle rabbi, quotes from Manus Friedman and makes a chilek, and I'm saying this to Ellis, I'm not putting down anyone else's path, it's, it's very helpful for people, I'm sure. But Rosh uh, Diamond uh, is bringing from Tao of uh, Manus Friedman, who was a huge student of the Rebbe, and all the other shlichim of the Rebbe as well, and we're learning Tanya, so this, there's a Nakuda high that we're trying to get to than just the Vekas, you understand? Mm-hmm. Even though the Vekas is a huge, huge, huge Matara and we should have a we should all be connected to the Vekas, but there's a level beyond that, and we're going to see now. As is written, 
He explains the, the Prophet, the Navi, all of our first team Ghana should go to the waters of the Torah, let them engage the Torah which is likened to water. The first two ones of the verse refers to those who are first for godliness. Yeah? We still haven't got to the Chilak yet, he's going to explain it. Yeah? Remember, the Balatani is the highest, he's talking about the Bnei Ali right now. They're beyond this level of, of divine service, of just thirsting right. for Hashem. The Bachuva thirst is amazing, but there's a level above that. The Devakis elevation course is great, but there's a level beyond that. And that this is where we're, I mean, I'm not saying I'm anywhere near it. Either, any, either of them, Halavai should be holding by anything. <laughs> but let's just see like what the Balatani says. Ela could rather the surface of Tunisar says, explains that which sages said, explains, as I said, who is pious, who's a chassid, a real chassid. They used to right. call the Vilna Gaon, I'm named after him, and so are you, probably, right. if you trace it back. Avelio a chassid. Yeah. I have the same name as the Vilna Yeah. Oh, perfect. So you, you mumish Evan Schlemer. So I'm learning with yeah. someone who has a name of, uh, his safer was Evan yeah. Schlemer. That was one of the first farm I learned in, 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 in Osamech. And it's, there was one Torah that stood out for me forever. That you're going to have all these midas. So you're going to come, and these midas are involved. Some of them could be weeds, surrounded by weeds. You've got to be planting a garden, and you've got to clean out the weeds. What are the me- weeds? Yeah. The bad midas. And he says, if you keep pouring the, to- the, the water of the Torah, we are thirsty for it. But you keep pouring this, this holy Torah, which is connected Mayim, which we're talking about, this thirst. We're, we're nourishing our garden. The only problem is we're growing all the weeds at the same time. So some of these bat tshuvas, they like become very knowledgeable in Torah, including I think I had time periods like this myself, but you've grown a monster as well within the garden. I say it to my son a lot, who's very into learning. Right. This is very important. Like Kala Kavod, you just Messiah him, say the Moed, you know, and now he's on to say this Noshim. Kala Kavod, but you have to work on the Midas. That for me is more Hoshiv. You have to make sure you're growing with this Torah, good Midas. It's like it's it's more important in a way. Like the Vivisal Salanta would say, it's easier to learn shas than to fix one meter. And I've seen that in my own life because I've learned, thank God, I've gone through Daf a bunch of cycles. So what does it mean, though, if you've grown a monster inside of you, you've got anger still, you've got all this like, right. like negative traits. I'm not talking about being a normal hum- human being, having normal things. I'm talking about where actual meters have not been uprooted that are actually damaging to your family, to yourself. Yeah, the from Yetzirah, exactly. And, um, no, that, 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 that Indian turned me off of Yiddishkeit for, yeah. for years. So these guys, aren't, you know they're nothing to do with this, those guys you're talking about, I who became, did that. I, I became not religious. Yeah. It was my much because of those, those people. Yeah, there. and those people had nothing to do with this. Because one, Hashem. they're not even Dovic to Hashem, because you heard they were dry. And when they gave up the Torah, it was dry. It, right. it, wasn't, it wasn't on fire for Hashem. It didn't have the first, the Vakas that we need. People like Rodinel Katz, all this. There's another guy, Dobbe Cohen. All these guys who teach more like, know. you know, meditation and panemius, yeah, in that way. Isn't that crazy? We, I mean, I should really go tell him one time. I was yeah. like, when I was in high school, or maybe yeah. first or post high school, I was like a, I was a, I was a nutty kid in high school. I was thrown at yeshiva, I was smoking a chavis. It was like, and then when I was in twelfth grade, I decided to become super religious. I grew mm. like peyo, peyotes. Mm. Anyways, when I was in twelfth grade or first year, yeah. I went to a yeshiva here, like a more brisker style yeshiva. Mm. We went on Hanukkah, me and my friend. We were just we were, we came for Hanukkah. We were like burnt out, and we because I was like learning like fourteen hours a day. I don't know, it was some uh. crazy number, and and I was I was like wasn't going. I was just learning all day till like uh. two a.m. Anyways, I went to him with my friend to just like get a bracha, get some chizik, right? And he ripped us. Like mamish, we walked in, and he just tore into us for like a good. I think he told me this my son. Fifteen right? minutes, and then like fifteen minutes in, my friend is a yasim. Uh, yeah. And he was like, your last name is whatever? He's like, yeah. He's like, are you related to this guy? He's like, hey, that's my brother. Wow. He's a brother into the yeshiva. And, like within, and then we saw, and then like you could see in his face, like he paused. He felt so stupid. Yeah. And he started making connections in his head, like how many, you know, Losa says that he just like, you know. Through Onus or whatever. Through like, also, he was just like, they're yeah. so mocked, but I'm like, you know. Now, a, real, a real brisker is, it's, the ones I met, like Rev Jermaine. This guy's a Rosh Hashiva. He's like yeah, one Rev, of the big Rosh Hashivas. Rav Mishai Jermaine, 
uh, Zatzal, he used to teach in Kesha and Osamea. Yeah. So he was one of the Rebbeim I connected with. And his friends, like Rapitam, who was Meshkir Chavon Osamea, used to say, and Derek, used to say that he's Machmi and Avis Hashem. I mean, Avis Hashem. Right. His Chumra, he understood from Bris the most important thing you need to be Machmi with is Avis Hashem. Uh. And his, his attributes, his Midot, his ability to connect to every kind of Jew, the most right. cracked out guy who would like smoke in his house on Shabbos, like crazy stories. Right. I watched you know, one of the few years I had the merit to be, by, be around him. He used to go for Shabbos, to go to Purim. I had the merit. I knew that he was one of these Siddiquim this time and I had to be around him. Right. And uh, Maybe, it, was, yeah. it was just funny because his, his, his very close friend, the Pitten, was like, my goal is to make sure you'd want to be a kind of Jew that would want to come to learn in the base of Midrash. Right, because yeah, he saw with me that I was a bit like, you know, I was different. Like I, I wasn't allowing the litvish, yeshivish, hashkafa to right. be my only way. So he was worried I was going to just become one of these like hippie guys, you know, playing the guitar, or whatever. Right, and not really learn. But I, I, I said to him, I, I said, to, I said to him, I have to do it like in a real. I don't know if I ever really got the conversation out to him, back to him, but my point was it wasn't going to be like the way the yeshivish world was pushing me. It had to come food process it right. wasn't because they like force you to learn Gomorrah and get yeah. back into the base midrash that's the only place my, I needed to sit with Ribera Wine Shirim in my room re reading a history book and playing the guitar and figuring myself out before I could just fly in learning you know yeah I, they pushed a lot of guys to fly in learning and those guys aren't from anymore like, the good know, part is that sense. that guy so quickly yeah like I went from zero to 60 and then I remember after that meeting I went back down yeah. And my mom is like, from yeah. there on, it was it's, just it's downhill. It's a bit of taste, man. And within a few months, I cut my pace off and mm -hmm. I just went back to like, you know. It's, it's so <laughs> important that you, one, daven, that you meet the right shlichim. Right. And two, you don't judge the Torah by the Jews. There's so many screwed up people out the there. The part is that because he did that, he turned me off and I had to go seeking. Oh, so then it, the it was the shrewdest of Yeah. You don't look at Gila, go through that. Took but me, it took you to a better place in a way. It took 10 years. After that, to really find. Yeah, but that's that's not. They, that guy has a you know Hashem Shemayin. We should never do that to anyone. Right. Like I've had my moments where I've been so maybe good. said stuff that not maybe I probably did say stuff to guys that maybe I shouldn't have. Like if I felt a guy was a bit like gay in his actions right. and the way he was acting, I would call him out. Uh, and maybe I shouldn't. Maybe I had one too many lachans when I did that, and they didn't appreciate it. Um, right. But <laughs> my wife, my wife rebuked me afterwards when she heard I did that. But I was like, no, like, be real. You've got, you've got a very gay tendency. Like, you're right. shopping, you're like, hands like this the whole time, you talk in a funny voice. Like, let's not pretend. Like, let go, go talk to uh, someone about it. Like, my whole thing was don't pretend. Don't pretend you're not something. Like, if you have an, an inclination, go do it. Right, man. I hear you. Because it will, it will kick you in the tuchus later. Right. I mean, they, maybe not. Some people, like, sort of fluke it. They have certain tendencies, and then they still can, like, sort of maintain it or a lifestyle, maintain it. Right. You know, and, and that whole past disappears. They don't want to be in mind about their past or Hilarious. certain tendencies. But my thing is, no, if you don't face that part, you can't be real about it. You had those inclinations. It's going to kick you in the tuchus at some point. That's so funny. So I was sometimes the unpopular Rebbe because I'd say the stuff that no one else would say. I imagine if you said that to someone, they wouldn't necessarily appreciate it. No. But I know why, where it was coming from because I, was, I wanted these guys to be real. Yeah. But maybe in my immaturity, I, there was a, probably a better way I could have said it that way with a macabre. Because if they're not macabre, then I haven't really done my job as a rabbi. But I was young, I was young. I, you know, I was having a look at hands, I was afraid of the guys. It was, you know, we used to get the guys together and drink a lot. And the yeshiva were against that. It was like, I was like a naughty rabbi. Yeah. I asked last night at B'nai Akiva, where's the booze? Yeah. They said, there's no booze in any of the official events. No, I didn't ask one of the official people, I asked one of the boycott. Right. They said to me, we're having the, the, the party tomorrow night. I said, why didn't they invite me to that? I'd much rather come to that. Right. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Huh? So what does this mean here? So, so yeah, we're uh, we're gonna, we haven't done the chilek yet. Yeah, it, this is a deep Kona. thing. That he who is benevolent, so a real chassid. We say we, we went off on Elio Novi, uh, Elio of uh, Elio Novi, Elio of uh, Chassid. The Vilna Gaon was a real chassid. The idea that he was chassid in Makoino, just like Avramina was chassid in his maker, im kav delay towards his creator, towards his nest, the source. This benevolence towards God consists of what? 
He's uniting the Holy One with his Shekhinah, so the light of Jinnah is reached and felt even in the lowest worlds. You hear and understand the difference? Yeah. It's this tremendous rotsen to bring down the Shekhinah, the, the Shem Kachibokhu, the Shekhinah Kadosha to all of Klai It's not right. about your thirst. Forget about you. Yeah? You're like Avram Vina in it. You, you, you want to do Chesed to the whole world, you want to bring Mashiach. It's just like the Rebbe, you know, Lubavitch Rebbe. Like he, he all the time would speak about Mashiach. So he, people didn't understand it, but the, the Nakura Panemius was that he had such a tremendous, I mean, not that we can know exactly where his heart was, but the concept of, that we're learning here from the Tukunizar, that he is, who's the real Chassid? The one who is benevolent with his creator, with his Kona, the one who created him, but what? And another translation is um, this towards his Shorish, that he wants to bring down the the Shina, the unification of the Shina into this world, into right. the lowest world. So that means elevating everybody and everything. Right. Yeah. In a, in a certain way, maybe that's Daniel Katz's Nakura elevation seminar that he's not keeping it to himself. He's trying to elevate everyone around him. So that would be a that would be a good a good hemshir. Yeah. If he's truly like bottled himself to real rots and Hashem and not just building his own following or whatever. So then he's able to elevate all the people around. If that's the goal, that everyone should be able to tune into this, yeah. and elevate themselves, and that's a good thing. This is a much higher level than just first thing for Hashem. And once again, we're not talking about levels. We're talking about like ideal states of, of, of Vodas Hashem that we should all aspire for. We should aspire for the makers. We should also aspire to do chesed with our maker. That right. means that we should want the world to be a place for the Shina Kadosha. Dir Tachtona. And this is another thing, this is all from the Zohar, Baruch Hashem. But remember, the Zohar is a big key to getting us out of this goddess. We already just learned from Shimba Yechai, turning darkness into light. Uh, that's, that's a big tachlis of the Bnei Aliyah. So also, when I'm partial to say, Kabar, the Shtadu, Basa, Avui, the Ema. The Rachim Lan, Yasser, Begarme, Benafshe, Revachaya, Nishmaseya. I think I translated, said the words hopefully somewhat a little bit correct. As explained in the Ramana on Pasha Tetzave, which is last week's Pasha, in the manner of a son who exerts himself to his father and his mother, he loves more than himself, more than his own nefesh, Ruch, and Neshama. You understand that? You, I'm sure you've had that in moments in life where you've come beyond your own levels, you know, your own right. spiritual. And you've done something out, truly altruistic. You've had a moment like that. Right. Where you're not like worried about what people in the base midrash are saying. You're not worrying about your levels in Torah. You're not worried about any of it. You just did something that was beyond yourself. You know, it could be moving to Eretz soul. Maybe that was from this higher level. Yeah? Yeah. You really want to bring the Sheena to the world. It's not going to happen in New York for you to stay there anymore. You know, it's not easy to move from country to country. I'm sure you know it better than me. I never did it. When I did it, I had nothing. All I had was a guitar, a Walkman, and right. a few swarm. That was my move, and so a few rag, rags of clothes. You moved, yeah? Most of them I gave away anyway when I came here. Right. So you, you, you were, and the books as well. You, you and my guitar also got stolen. So I ended up yeah. with nothing almost, and a Walkman broke. So I ended up with nothing. By the time I was getting married, I literally like had a bag of stuff. Wow, really? Yeah, and, and some pitsy little bit of money. And I, I lived here with nothing. <laughs> so you and you came, you came with like a boat, you came <laughs> uh, filled with stuff, yeah? Uh, no, we just came with suitcases. Suitcases, you didn't do one of those boat deliveries? We didn't do lifts, no, it was too late. We decided to move here like a few weeks before. So we you haven't came. got your like swarm still stuck in some Nished. storehouse somewhere? Everything is just, no, it's still in my house in New York. We, ah, so you still got it there? We, All right, yeah. one day you'll get that stuff here also. Yeah, we left a lot. <laughs> we left our whole world. You can still send it while you're here. No, no, we're, eventually we're going to figure out. It doesn't, it doesn't make sense. There's nothing... Nothing that you need to have. Anymore. Like, now the only thing we want is, our, is, my, is my svar. That's what I'm saying. And, yeah. and, my, and, our, and our pictures. Yeah, there we go. Cookbooks. Yeah. And Lego. My Stuff has a thousand, massive thousand. Lego collection. Oh, my kids love Lego. And in Israel, Lego is so Lego. expensive. My kids, I bought all my Lego from London. Slowly, slowly. I, suitcase after suitcase, every trip I went. I think my next, my, my mom next was like, trip. what did you take this time? And she'd like open up my bag and be like, a whole like area of my suitcase filled with Lego. My like Playmobil as well. Gonna, I think on my next trip, I'm just going to load up a suitcase with Lego. I bought all the Lego to a frat. But I left all my Plemabil in New Shalim. I've got so much Plemabil. Mm -hmm. So when I have Liana, as a Hashem, I have lots of babies, grandchildren. To, to 
I'm going to give them the Playmobil Don't at first because it's bigger Lego. pieces, and then get to the Lego later. Lego's more Some advanced. Of my youngest son will play Lego. One of my oldest son played. My, my other two kids, my other kids never played. Yeah, but well, there's also phones now. So it's big to sign. But no, my other kid, my younger kids are more like just my my oldest son was able to sit for hours and play. My youngest sons were never really interested. They wanted to like run around and play That's sports. Good. That's and good. Every kid is different. It's true. But they, I, I hope that the new generation won't just grow up with these phones or whatever the cyborgs are planning, that we should oh. be able to give them real toys to play with. They should run yeah. around, they should get dirty, they shouldn't just yeah, grow yeah. up in their rooms looking at machines. Amen. It's not right to Hashem. But Masa Gemari, Lamisa, Elayu, the Farklon, and who is sacrificed for sake to redeem them? Kamosh, Kosom, Achemacher. So you hear the mysterious nefesh. Do you, I don't know if you relate to this with your parents, but like I had this deep need every so on to just go visit them, and I'm not going to get much out of it. You know, it's not like they're they're bankrolling me, or like they're going to buy me like a new, you know a new outfit or anything. It's, even though there's sometimes that comes with the trip, a little bit of shefa. But the main nakuda when I go back to England is because you just want to you want to connect with your parents. It's a deep right. need to be connected with them, and you it's beyond your nish, the, the levels of your neshama. It's right. it's something beyond. You just feel you need to be with your parents. And my son, I sense that with him in the army, this deep connection he has with my wife and our family, that it's from this holy place. Like while he's in Canyonis, and thank God they're at the end part now. By, by the way, he phoned last night, and there was so much gunshots and things kicking off like all around him the whole time he's on the phone. I mean, it's proper f- high-level action going on over there. Wow. And they're constantly fighting. I just found like 10 kilometers of tunnels and... They're busy with like crazy, like, like cleanup. It's there's so much to do. He's hoping he's going to get a week off. Um, that's that's what they're talking about. So that before they go to the next slab or whatever that is, you know, up north or wherever it is. But it, it's coming to an end. But they they're really still finding out the whole I way. Feel like they're not. Mass. They didn't finish the job yet, though. No, it's not. It's so that's so why it's Biden so shut his mouth, stick the ice cream in his mouth, better than him speaking. Because he's a schmuck and doesn't have nothing, any, anything good to say. I really hope say. Israel doesn't cave to, to Biden. No, definitely should not. Or any of his people. They're completely Hashem's against help. our people, like in 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 the long term. They're nothing. You see, Biden Mamish doesn't care. In the beginning, he was like. Yeah, it's a show. Politics. Was like politics, and now he's already caving to the politics. Yeah, he's left the radical wing. He's not even going to vote for him, probably. I don't know if he himself believes. I don't know if he himself. Yeah believes the things he's saying no he's not there i think he's a he's not well, i think i think when they stuck something in his brain when when he was when he had his brain operation he's controlled yeah he's being controlled so i don't think he's say, he's an entity i think he's i saw the news they said it's going to be over monday well, like, yeah he's, he's, he's talking not to be an ice cream he shut his mouth Muscle and who sacrificed life for the sake to redeem them you see them this is the right way of thinking the complete the serious nefesh, this this Madrego. It's it's a high level of, of life. That's why suddenly these soldiers come to such high levels, like they suddenly come to the levels that we're talking about here in Bnei Aliyah, without even being Siddiquim. How do they get to these Madregos of Bnei Aliyah? Because they're they're coming from the place of Yechida, of complete serious nefesh, which is the highest level of the kudah of the soul. This is in the kudah of Mashiach is Yechida. The only problem is now when they come back into reality, do they have the kalim to bring it down into Yiddishkeit or does it turn into Gaiva? That's what the whole Shia we're learning from Shlomo. Yeah? We have to help them when they come back into reality to bring it into Torah and mitzvahs and, and, and to, to, to ground it in Panemius, this high level they reach. They shouldn't become Gaivadic like it did all the previous stories yeah? where they start to think that they did it. Yeah? I have to realize, no, Hashem gave you this special le- gift of Yechida, of this high-level soul, at these moments, because He wants you to, to do this holy mission. Just remember that it's all Hashem, and therefore you have now a Christ right. to, to honor Hashem who did that for you and helped you survive those, those tremendous battles and wars that they're going through. And we are all going through on some level, on a previous level as well. Hashem's giving us these gifts. So we have to understand, it's the most nefesh constantly for right. Hashem. And the Indian, the Indian with and it's the, a very pure source that this is talking about. The Indian is is that I, I, I guess there's I no know, yes, there's, yeah. there's no I guess the Tanya doesn't mention this yet. Maybe he will, or maybe this is what yeah. is inherent within why we're even learning this is that this is something that we need to strive for in our own day to day basis, right? No, this I mean, is Benalia. This is the highest level kind of no, Jesus, for sure. Right? But I'm saying like 
This Indian but of this light. is a matara. We have uh, it as a goalpost. Kivra de Ashtadel, Basar, Avoy ve Ema, the Rachemon, Yatir mi Garme, Benafshi, Ruche, Yeah, this is beautiful, Zoa. This is beautiful. This is like. And this is Umasar Garme Lamisa. And the man of a son exerts himself for his father and mother. And he loves more than himself, more than his own nephew. And the same for a woman. She loves more than. I see her with my wife. I feel like she lives in a slum. When she goes to the Magdevar Adom, or the way she is with my kids, she's so beyond. It's this mother, like Rahmanas from her mother. It's like so beyond. It's interesting that he uses a son here, not a parent. But. Yeah, because the sun it's easy is love. To, you know, in a way, it's like my, the, the love I have for my kids also. It's very easy. Yeah. Everything is for them. I, I do everything for them. None of it makes sense. Yeah. You know, it's like uh, well, if, if I think something is, you know, there were times where like uh, we were, there were things we were, we were paying for them. that things were was, was insane. It was like yeah. beyond what, I, you know, what, what for the sake of the afford, benef- but it was like, health. oh, if this yeah. therapist, if this school, if this yeah. thing will help them. But I do feel like I've got a bit ripped off by a lot of that stuff, honestly. Like it's, I know you have to do it, but yeah. I like some of the stuff I paid for for my kids, like uh, tutors and the the special about help. It is that like they they gone of him. Like they didn't they didn't really help my kids fully. Like they right. they just they just know how to make a panasa out of it. Right, for so sure. I, it was nice when I found the real shlichim, and the real shlichim right. generally didn't need much money. The real right. shlichim are just happy to do God's mission of helping the shamans, and right. those people are amazing, and they really help my kids. But Emma's. Right. And I have a ton of cars to talk to those people. Yeah, I hear that. I hear that. I mean, sometimes it's just a search. Yeah, you have like to go through The kid knows it. that we searched. That's yeah, it. Sometimes we I can't even find the shliach. And, yeah. and uh, the shliach is, is myself. The shliach is the search. And the, the most but important thing my kids have realized themselves, that after all the help that we've ever got them and all the different avoda, they're going to have to do the work themselves. The only yeah. one that can really help yourself is yourself. Ultimately, you need the tools from other people, and it's, it's a growing, it's a hinnach, and it's a journey. But the ultimate avoda is now I have to do it myself. I've yeah, heard all the sure. Torahs, I've heard all the right advice, I've, di- I've gone to the shirim, I've gone to the mahankrim, I've gone to the therapist, whatever it is, but now I'm going to have to apply it. It's like, it's like one, one Yid said when he left Rasuma Zilberg as like his main rebbe, like he moved to Tolna, he said to me, he said, I've heard all the most gewaldic shmacha Torahs from the, from the, from the, from Rav Simai Zilber. He said, my next stage of my life is applying it. As he said to me. Wow. I, I've watched the Sadiq doing the highest level of Vodas Shem, but now I have to do it myself. Right. That's going to be the whole shtick. Like, like you did say here, like, can you bring this into your daily life? That's the right question to ask. Right. And there is something of this that we can bring into our daily life. We, we can't be in Timyonis. We can't imagine that we're on these levels of B'nai Aliyah. Right. If we start thinking we're B'nai Aliyah, then we've missed the boat a little bit, you know, because, you know, we're not B'nai Aliyah. Let's just be honest. Like, maybe on a, on a, a we have a moment of it, where an Ibu and a Shama Sadiq comes, helps us become a shtick of B'nai Aliyah, and we're doing it suddenly for these higher reasons. But, like I say, with the soldiers, they have a moment of tremendous Aliyah with the war. They're suddenly serving Hashem on a whole new level. Like my son, in the, in the war right now, he brought a Gemara with him. He's learning Gemara. And one of the boys, who's from a very like, left-wing house, brought him a Lekut Maron because he, he thinks someone gave it to him on the way. And he thought of, Bar- of my son, Baruch Hitzak, and gave him a Lekut He has now a Lekut Maron. He's learning Lekut Maron in Kanyunis, yeah, and Gemara. And the chitas he's been learning the whole time because he had that Even the whole time. Even just carrying that safer on you. Was yeah, yeah, no, the extra weight. He doesn't have room. Right. He, he, it's real cheshman every that. single thing. The, 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 he's already got five close. bullet bags, a machine gun. Yeah, right. it's hu- incredibly heavy. So so just imagine it's just, it's just having, you have, uh, whatever, 50, 60 pounds of, 70 pounds of weight on you. Yeah. You decide to add in a... Uh, Gemara, not like uh, other comfort things. Gemara, Marana, Tehillim. Chitas. Chitas is heavy. They don't even need to learn. They can yeah. just have that safer, carrying around that extra weight, and that yeah. alone is like... Uh, One of my favorite pictures when he came back was his Tehillim, his Tefillin... His 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 uh, bag that he has with him wherever he goes, right. and and the heat is sitting on top while he's just emptying wow. all his machine gun bullets and uh-huh. everything else. That's like what's coming with him, you know. Yeah, like I'm um, Matzah Shabbos. My wife and I went out to eat. Yeah. We took we, we needed a night out, and so we went to Yushalayim. That's nice. We went to Mamila, the parking yeah. lot. We parked on the ground. Yeah, I've done this many times. And yeah. then we get into the we get into the elevator. Yeah. And these three Israelis like. It was like two or three Israeli men, yeah. two or three Israeli girlfriends, yeah. 
totally non-religious. Like yeah. she had a tattoo. She yeah. was dressed like you know, yeah. totally like a you know, whatever. Like like they look like party guys, yeah. you know. And you know he had like a tattoo on his neck, and then I look at him, and he's wearing titsis. Yeah. Like no yarmulke. Like there yeah. was no. Yeah. It was just like oh, it's it's such what's a, going it's on. Such a I, I went like, to what? King David and some it's old guy who like never wore sitsis. He said, "I'm wearing a lot. The last two months, I've been wearing sitsis." This guy is wearing sitsis. So I said, "No, where are they?" He said, "I'm washing them right now." I said, "Well, you know, I went to the time. I just get another pair." So I just I decided, you know what? I'm just going to focus on the good of this dude. Like, I'll call, I just said, "Color covered." Look, he's washing his sitsis even. I, I wanted to wow. only be positive with this dude. I was so inspired yeah. just seeing that this guy was like bald headed Israeli totally. yeah, so he was like a bald headed tattoo so wearing the, he, chains he had to come up and tell us I'm wearing sitsis now you know t- his sitsis were out were hanging yeah, this out. guy wasn't even uh, wasn't actually was wearing like, that moment like, but, he was like yeah. so proud of it and I wanted to yeah. be like he was proud of it that he wasn't even wearing, wearing them he was still like, proud he's of it he's not wearing a yarmulke he's yeah. like Shomer Shabbos this guy probably like yeah. he just wearing sitsis like, it was like how we not at the, the, we're almost at, we're at the foothold of Mashiach if this is what's happening where it's like People are wearing tits just because they're just like wearing tits. They have no reason. They're just like they, they want to wear it, right? There's no reason. They're not like it looks cool. It's not a style. They just put it on because they feel like they want to. It's very simple. Yeah, it's from a they deep place. They feel connected. It's from some, their neshamas are just like, you know, they might have some rational You know reason. how many soldiers have put my son's filling on and the spare yeah, pair? That's crazy. We're, we've sent there now. Like, he, he Mamish is endlessly been using his filling on endless souls who didn't grow up with any connection right. like they thought the Haredim were like the aliens yeah? right. and they're putting on tefillin because they, their neshamas are alive right. so this, this level is awakened it's a real kashering that's what it's the, like this, this pure part of the Yiddish neshama is, right. awa- is alive right now right. and it's, it's alive in Am Yisrael and that's which we, by the way this is like kind of what, what, what is happening is that you read the Zohar again is like yeah. You know, umasa garme lamisa alayu. Yeah, sacrifice his life for the sake to redeem He's prepared to die for yeah. that. My for son them. every day says, well, I'm prepared. He protectivity. tells us in his own mouth, I'm prepared to die for the sake of Am Yisrael. He's right. not doing some Devaker's course. He says, I'm prepared to die for Am Yisrael. For the sake of you, all right. of you, mommy, daddy, brothers, sisters should have security. I'm finding wow. those missiles. I'm killing Hamas. I'm literally stopping these people from throwing missiles at my own family right. and all the friends and the communities. And then they come back here and they're greeted like Malachim, like by the real people who understand them, Mrs. Nevish, like Shlomo and people here understand them, Mrs. Nevish. And then they feel, wow, now I'm really doing it for the real thing. Not because, because people are hopping what I'm doing. When he goes some places, they oh, don't yeah, hop. Yeah, this they're is in crazy. The, they just take it for granted what these guys are doing. But like, you know, even my family, I'm like trying to talk to them about. You know, because they're hearing all the news, ceasefire, and, uh, and I'm like, you know, I just want them to just understand my son is, is a hero. My, thank God my dad got on the phone. He said to my son, uh, when his last 48-hour visit from two of them from the whole time, he said to him, thank God, the right thing. He said, you're a hero, and we, 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 we're very, like, in honor in, in awe of you as my grandson. He said the right words, you know. I was very happy that he did that, because it would have been a problem if he hadn't. Um, thank God. So the idea of elevating the evil and convert it to good, that is the right. ascent of man. There's a deep concept. These guys, these guys are being are being what the we're, we're, get, we're, we're going to now get into this concept of mad and man. You know what these ideas? Mayan Dukhvin and Mayan, Mayan um, Nukvin. These are two concepts we're going to, we're going to go on to explain. The, the idea of these B'nai Aliyah are elevating everything. The elevation of feminine waters and the elevation of masculine waters. Oh, interesting. Yeah, this is deep concept. Um, so a time check? They elevate evil. We've got enough time to do this last part of the Perak. Hashem will we'll start Perak Chadisrei. Um, 11th Perak. Um, when is it? Oh, wow. We've got thir- we're only th- Wednesday. We've got two more days. So we'll, we'll be able to enter into the next safe part of the safe, which is safe with Shaim. Let's end off with the safe of, B'nai, of the Siddiquim, the B'nai Aliyah. This is the concept the men of ascent. These B'nai Aliyah are ascent of man. They're elevating the man, my oh, Nukvin, yeah, yeah. and the descent of mad, which is my Nukvin. Feminine waters, masculine waters. It's very Kabbalistic concepts. Um, it also really enjoys, it employs Kabbalistic terms. Uh, which explain the Hasidus at length, because remember, Alter Rebbe has Svarim and Svarim, like Torah or Likuti Torah, yeah, there's my Marim, it's not just Tanya, yeah? Tanya mm. is, was the safer for us to be able to 
get hadracha. But there's there's mu- there's so much maimarim on in Hasidus on these concepts. So you know we're just getting a very like uh, kits of view of these very deep concepts. Shneim olem bekana echad. Both in terms of comprehension by refining ki ayde haburuim. And you've asked this many times. Bururim shemavarim menoga alem maim nukvim. You keep talking about this klipas noga. It's obviously a point which is what we're dwelling on in this parak because yeah. we're not talking about in this chapter the glimmel tivus There's Nothing to do with that. These guys never do averus. Yeah, they're not involved with the Torah of mistakes. They're not Torah mistake people. Yeah. Maybe on in the inner level and subtle levels, these more dactikis, you know, madragas of what, whatever they're fixing, but they're not definitely not involved with any arevas or klipas kemes 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 kemes. They're a tikkun. They're a voter. They they have to, as a human being, deal with klipas noga, as a man of sense, do by converting that animal soul to good. One elevates feminine waters. Yeah, we're trying to get that animal soul, which is which is the uh, area of klipas noga. They're to good. They're turning it into transforming it into tov through the Mayim Nukvim, through the feminine waters. But Nasim, and this is a key word here, Nasim Yechudim, they're affecting unions. This is very Baal Shem Tov, Kabbalistic. Supernal. Hasidus. Supernal. Yeah, they're, they're creating unions. Elyonim Lahoyred Mayim Dukvin, to draw down the Mayim Dukvin, right. yeah, these, these masculine waters. Remember, this is a unification. The yeah. Mayim Nukvim, feminine, meeting the masculine. Yeah, the this is the panemius. This is what you have to understand with the whole the world's taken this concept of sex, yeah, yeah. and a uh, man and woman and turned it into the most grub, physical, pure type of nothing. And that's why all their marriages are falling apart, and it's it's all a big mm-hmm. mess. Because if it's not, I mean, not all of them, but a large amount. The ones that don't, it's a miracle, yeah. Because if you don't go into the panemius of it, the panemius of it is the point of it. The point of it is that there's this unification going on on a spiritual level and there's a responsibility to that spiritual experience and then it, uh, it gives you such a appreciation for for the whole experience and who your who your wife is i mean the the the, the romanus freeman's approach is you have to get out of the it, the experience in a certain way and just connect because it's rats and hashem like on a higher level he has a whole thing called the secret i don't know if you've ever seen it there's a whole thing about how, tr- how to really connect because it's it's getting into these panemius levels without him saying that. He's saying it more simply according to our level. Like he's been on all kinds of famous American shows and explaining it. The, the real key to relationships is that once again, it's, it's getting out the ego, the, the what you get out of it. It's going to this higher, it's not even a level. It's going to this truer reality of panemius, of connection, because it's Ratz and Hashem, because it's, right. it's an edel, gentle, um, yichud, unification. You're making unifications in the higher to bring down Mayim Dukhrin to send to the world. I once did a course with Manus Freeman. The, the son gave it to me for free. Nice. Yeah, Zama for some reason. When I was living in Beta, I wouldn't have been able to afford it back then. So he gave me a, fr- and I joined on through Zoom or whatever it was, Skype. I don't know how long ago it was. And I joined on and uh, it was amazing. It was an amazing course. It was about these kind of subjects. Drawing the masculine water to, to send to the world, the ideas of mashpia, makabul, the one who's mashpia and the one who's receiving, to truly receive, to truly mashpia, for the sake of the makabul, not to, for the sake of your pleasures, but the sake of makabul, to give over the pleasure for the sake, pleasuring this other person for the sake of the makabul, so they become a, a true kibble of the yeah. of the light of the neshama. Shehem hem mime chasadim. These masculine waters are the waters of kindness that flow into and are contained in each of the two four eight mitzvahs, which are all in the natures of kindness, of benevolence and masculine waters. This is the concept of drawing holiness from above, Downwards, so the holiness can clothed in and revealed within the lowest realms in our physical world. I'll explain this way. Yeah, but you see this, 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 these men of ascent, they're about bringing the Shrina, bringing down these Mayim masculine waters to meet the feminine waters, about making Yechudim, making unifications, elevating the world in the most deepest sense. That's the true Shorish and, and understanding of the highest level, Siddiqui. I'm going to get into levels. The, the, the truest level. Oh, true, so I'm get out of the word of the level. The truest Matthias of the Sadiq, of B'nai Amelia, these, high, these uh, huge, huge 
So here he says like a little a little tidbit here. Yeah. He goes, this, uh, however, this leads to the question. The mitzvah observance causes masculine yeah. waters to be manifest on the earth. Why should this be unique to the complete tzaddik? Surely yeah. it applies to any person who observes the mitzvah. Yeah. Like it's a kasha, you know. Um, While it is true that any mitzvah produces this result, ah, uh, makes a ot, 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 yeah. it is the complete tzaddik to whom it really matters, even if the ordinary person is aware of the spiritual result of his uh, mitzvah, that heavenly energies will manifest on the earth. It probably won't be overwhelmingly important to him. Right? Oh. Sometimes we do the mitzvahs for the covet of ourselves. We do it because yeah. we feel guilty. We feel obligated. We want our business deals to work out. From. We want we want to just uh, from. want to feel from, want to feel good. Only the complete tzaddik who observes a mitzvah for no other reason than to manifest God in this world oh. Oh. does the dynamic between the masculine and the feminine or truly work in synergy. Oh, synergy. Beautiful. Synergy. That's a good word. There's a movie from that, Synergy. Yeah, I don't know if that was such a highly good movie, but the point is that... I don't remember what movie it's from. The Nakuda is that we are Zohar, we are meritorious by learning Sefer Tanya in this parak to touch on a, a true revelation of what a Sadiq, what a Benali is, is. so that we can have that Batara, we can have that goal, we can... You know, one of the points, when the uh, most important message... <laughs> I got no, from the Masila, you're very fun. <coughs> Masila, you should sure, be a couple of fools off from it. So. Masila, he said, well, Veloski once made a joke, he's good at bringing humor and it brings it right. very important. He says, you know, the whole reason of the yarmulke, just so you can scratch your head and not need to wash your hands. Right. <laughs> you know, it's like these kind of like comments. But anyway, the point back to uh, the, the Tanya, before we go to Perak 11, chapter 11, and get into the Rishayim, we have to have this Matara. And Musa, I can see this, is to give us the high flag posts, the goals of what we should aim for. Right. We should want to be like the Rabbah Rebbe, like on the most we want to be Makusha, how do you Makushi be like that, Sadiq? Right. We have to we have to try without imitating, without fooling ourselves in the most real sense, learn from their love for Hashem, their love for their for their creator, and their mysterious nephesh for the creator. They literally don't sleep and drink and do anything for themselves. Everything is about their Hashem right. and Shkina Kadosh uniting the the <sighs> masculine and feminine waters through Torah Mitzvah is bringing it. It's always, remember, that's important that w- of all this panemius that it goes back into the Torah right. Mitzvah. It doesn't just float around. It's not this like floaty, it's, it's not this meditational experience. The most important point with the Rebbe was Iki Himaisa, to go to Torah Mitzvah. Always Torah brought it into Torah Mitzvah. It never just became this like floaty... Uh, right, he was very into just doing. Yeah, much. doing Torah Mitzvah. Because he understood that's going to awaken that's the Neshama and that's going to connect them to him or to the, the not to him personally but to he would always he, he didn't when he spoke he didn't really matter it was about the nosi of the generation the nitzos of Yaakovino in every generation and who for him it wasn't the him who was it it was his shver his, fa- his father-in-law that's who he yeah he mamish like he didn't reference himself he referenced his father-in-law because he had true bittle have you ever done that Abba yeah scream out in the scream dark scream Abba of I've done that a few times I did yeah. it in Svat I did it by the coastal one time. I just went to the wall and I just caught huh? at the top of my lungs. All right. I ever noticed the word Russia? Yeah. It's like, I forgot who I, maybe I think those are Joey I went with. Yeah. But the certain, like, the way the words are written, the certain expression of your voice. Yeah. Like, Russia. It's like a, huh. you know what I'm saying? Like, it's a, it, it almost huh. awakens a, huh. uh, it awakens like an exhale to the experience. The most and beautiful the thing is... The word is like a... Smooth. You, you feel yeah. like you're going up. Up. Uh, it's true. There is just... I mean, it's deeper than just the translation. Just the Tumunus of Osseus we're learning in the Ketoran. Right. The Tumunus of Osseus, the way the letters are formed and the sounds. Right, the, and exactly. The sounds and have, the... They have... The, uh, and the, the Torah guides us. Rab Joey that. knows a lot of this type of stuff. I think it's from Joey, yeah. Yeah, sure. We learned the different like expressions the, of the sounds. Bnei says the, the inhales, word Rasha is the same, same letters as Shah. It's crazy. Shah. It creates a gate, a gate, a gateway for us. No, it's to help us become a gateway towards us right. getting closer to Hashem. That's all that's really the idea of the Russia force. And that's going to be the next chapter. The Russia force. It's going to help us get a gateway to, the, to Hashem, to learn about it. To know what, to know what we aspire for and know what we should run away from. Right. All the soldiers. They're really doing, there's fighting. Continue it's all, wiping out all the evil. The sound from last night, the amount of bullets and action going on in the sound behind them. Like, it's, the war's full on. It's not like, don't believe in the news. 
It's full on. They're fighting for us. There's tunnels, there's still there's so much to do. So much to do. Well, the Babbage Rabbi to say, I've done what I can, now you have to do the rest. Like, there's so much to do. It's not finished yet. Wars, wars on. Let's keep fighting.